Richard Opol in Poland writes to me, or it's Richard in Opol, Poland. I'm sorry, I apologize, Richard. I can't figure it out because that's all right. Anyway, not important. Hi, Paul. You are one of those audiophiles that I look up to. Well, thank you, sir. So maybe you could help me with my dilemma. I'll do my best. I am about to select a subwoofer for the room. I understand that the sound pressure level depends mainly on the amplification of the subwoofer. Should I look for a subwoofer with a power amp that is capable of filling in the entire room? Or is it sufficient to select one that can cover my listening position? What is the relationship between the amplification, the room size, and the listening position? Whew! That's a lot there, my friend. I would not choose a subwoofer based on amplifier power. I would assume that any subwoofer that is by a legitimate manufacturer, and by legitimate manufacturer, I mean people who are trusted in the industry to make great products. I mean, you, there's, there are great REL. I always talk about REL, John Hunter and all that. They make great products. We will someday make a subwoofer, a whole line of subwoofers. Um, gosh, who else? JL, um, PSB, I'm sure B&W makes subwoofer. You know, on and on. Uh, legitimate it, companies, as opposed to the Acme brand of subwoofer that you find like, hey, it's on special at Best Buy. Woohoo! I, stay away from that. But if you're going to go with a legitimate high-end audio company that makes subwoofers, trust them that they built the amplifier and mated it to the woofer and its performance. Okay? I, I, I know of no legitimate company out there that would do otherwise. We certainly wouldn't. None of those companies would. Okay? So we're, we're mating the appropriate amount of watts to a specific cabinet size and woofer size. A, a great example, when Bob Carver, one of my all-time heroes, built his, his little cube. I mean, this thing had a two or three inch throw. I think, it, was it a 12 or a 10? I don't remember. But the cabinet was, you know, it was this big. In order to do that, and, and it produced pretty good bass. In order to do that, he needed a massive amplifier, two or 3,000 watts. And, and, and what was silly about the amplifier is when it got going, unless you had it nailed to the floor, the thing would start moving along the floor. <laughs> I, I actually put my foot on one. I couldn't hold it down. I mean, it was that powerful. But anyway, I, I digress. What you want to look for in a subwoofer, depending on what you want to do, is enough size of the woofer uh, or the or look at its frequency response to see if it's going to fill in the areas that you're missing because Paul's rule of subwoofers is we don't use subwoofers to do anything other than fill in the missing areas created by the room that's what we like to do unless you have a really tiny pair of loudspeakers and you're using the subwoofer to fill in what the loudspeakers aren't doing not my favorite way of doing business. It, it's legit. You can do that. I would much rather see you buy a decently full range loudspeaker and then use the subwoofer to fill in for the deficiencies of the room. And regardless of the size of the woofer, if it can go down to 20, 30 hertz, remember that wavelength is in the many, many feet, 20, probably more, more, the wavelength is longer than your room is long or wide. So it's going to fill the room no matter what. But I wouldn't use amplifier power as the way to judge it. Okay? Hope that not too rambly and made a little bit of sense. All right. Thanks. Talk to you later.